microphones, but I hear this yeah. echo. So I will have to sort of try to figure out how to do that. I'm trying not to touch the table in case that's it. Um, okay, we are up to our consent grouping. Um, is there anything in the consent grouping that anybody would like to pull out for a separate consideration? Okay, that should actually say I have a motion to approve consent grouping 6A136B2. I have a motion that we approve consent grouping 6A136D2. Second. Okay, and we will start with our curriculum report from. Our instructional highlight for last week's meeting um, was, was a kind of like a presentation from our three school resource officers, so our SROs as we often refer to them, um, and then just the different jobs that they carry out throughout the district. So just a reminder that we have three of them, one designated for each attendance zone. So we have Jim Zamoda from Central, at Central uh, we have Corey um, Right? <laughs> or Eastern and uh, Ben Dunn back at Northern. And so our SROs carry out a wide variety of activities for our school. So they went through all of the different things that they do for each of our schools. Um, and just a few highlights of things that they do because um, to have a comprehensive list of everything that they do for our kids and our schools and our teachers and our staff um, would be pages long. So they engage in a teaching Was um, Officer Dunnebeck gave an example that he worked with classes educating students on car insurance and how that works and what students should do if they are pulled over, what information should they be given to law enforcement, if there's a case of an accident, who should they call, how does that work? Um, just kind of like the, the basics of um, being a responsible driver. Um, they also engage. day-to-day -day tasks like um, helping with traffic at the schools and parking lots and um, running drills and security meetings. Uh, they build relationships with kids. Uh, they help school hold truancy issues. They investigate for conflict of interest in legal activity. Uh, they give class presentations like I just mentioned. They provide security at major events like prom and homecoming and major sporting events or um, other events that are being held at by letting the school know what's going on, if they think it might impact school. Um, I do know that a lot of our high school students, especially uh, because that is where our SROs uh, spend a lot of their day, um, they have great relationships with those SROs um, on their campus. And they look to them as another adult in the building who will help them, uh, or show an interest in them, which we know is an invaluable asset to any school district. Just another of all the extra hours these officers put in to keep our students safe uh, and to help out our families. And they do definitely put in lots of extra hours above and beyond just the school day. All right, so in terms of curricular resources, we have a few to approve. Um, and one thing I want to mention for a lot of these items is that they are being paid for with grant funding and our remaining investor money. that grant. Um, it was a lot of work to apply for it and it provides the district with an incredible amount of money to purchase literacy materials at the K-5 level. Uh, this literacy grant requires that all K-5 teachers receive additional literacy key and curriculum support. So for tonight on our list and just reminding everyone there's about a 100 page attachment to our meeting minutes from last Wednesday where you can read in depth 
that are gonna be used for you from everything that you need to know. So the first thing um, is jump rope readers for K and three to be used in our summer school program. These are a series of nonfiction books for kids to learn early research skills and experience with informational text, which is a crucial skill for any of our assessments that we give. Tears for grades K to two. That is exactly what it sounds like. Um, hopefully, we'll see. <laughs> and it's paid for with that 35 day literacy grant that I just mentioned. Also, decodable books for grades K to five from a variety of different vendors, also from that 35 day grant. And if you look at the attachment from our meeting uh, last week, there are many, many pages that detail which vendors all those different books are coming from. Um, also, uh, a new program, Trails to Wellness, that will support our PBIS in our schools and behavior in our buildings at the tier one level. Um, these are lessons that focus on character traits like self-awareness, self-management, relationship skills, responsible decision-making. 25 lessons for each grade band that features a guidance counselor certified by the instructor. Um, this also includes family resources to be sent home with each and every student. Incredibly well organized for teachers to implement. Um, everything they need to take off is there for them. It's a, a free resource for us um, from the state of Michigan. And we will be joining about 700 other schools in Michigan to do use this. And then, to review from last month that we are voting on to approve tonight for our core language classes, we have Ed Puzzle, uh, La Lingua. And those, just as a reminder for you, are just giving teachers a variety of lessons from their assessments, supplemental review for Spanish, cultural videos, quizzes, um, grammar and vocab practice for our foreign language classes, and then real conversations with native speakers that our immersion students can also use to practice those language skills. And then lastly, going up for a monthly review, we have two resources. One is a resource for our Uh, called English 3D and Read 3D. These resources are aligned with the WIDA test that all our MLL students take annually, and it provides tiered instruction and a hard copy book that's assimilable for all of our students. And then the last one going up for review is from the University of Florida Literacy Institute, um, which is reading and literacy lead slide. And that provides tier two support in areas like language awareness and also comprehension. So again, as well. Uh, in the end of April, so that's 83% of the way through the school fiscal year, 69% of the way through the school year. We uh, reviewed monthly financial statements that were in our packet, nothing notable to draw our attention to, uh, all tracking as expected. We had uh, a good bond construction update um, and a couple of highlights. Central Middle School is complete in its original scope. An additional front entrance that we discussed separately is to come yet this summer, um, but that's incredible space. We saw some pictures of kids thoroughly enjoying what has been done over there. Uh, Ada Vista is about 50% complete. Pine Ridge is 40-ish percent complete tracking um, as expected. The Eastern Middle School entrance starts this month, um, that, that middle school entrance off of MAP. And as a, as a note, that parking lot, the plan is to be closed <laughs> due July and August in the summer for that work to before school is back in session. Um, so that's the beginning, and then that whole lot will be um, down for the summer to complete that work. We also got an update on our 2023 work, which is well underway. The athletic fields that we've talked about and seen, those have, are up to bid, and we, uh, the expectation is we'll have something to review a uh, recommendation next month uh, to award that work. Much has been happening on the Aquatic Center front as well. Uh, Dr. Fawcett and I accompanied a handful of people from the district, coaches and athletic uh, directors and, and others, um, along with the architecture teams and others uh, on a tour to see a couple of other districts and community pools. Uh, fascinating and amazing some of the things that are in those. Uh, and I think a lot of good idea generation came from that. So that's in the design phase. 
Central High School is the next piece of this as well, after the athletic piece, and that's in the design phase uh, already too. The architect uh, firm already is meeting with staff uh, and teachers at school, trying to reimagine these spaces, figure out what people need, what people want, how we can do things differently as we you know, embark on that next large project. So that's in process. And a few other uh, things kind of bond at large. The Bach facilities team is being created, something formal that we haven't had previously. Uh, a group of the architects, construction managers, staff, um, other district folks, probably one or two of us, presumably as well, to just sort of follow this work longitudinally and look at what's ahead and look at where we are in our current projects, uh, just so we can really have this templated out and, and be very aware of this, the phases we're in on all of these projects, which goes hand in hand with the website as well. We've talked about the a website for this 2023 bond in the next 10 years to scope all this out. The district is also looking at kind of re-website development across the the whole district as well. So playing that game of not trying to create something brand new just to tear it all apart when the, the broader website gets redone. But that um, that is forthcoming as well so that everybody in the community can see where we are and what our spending plans are and all these details uh, around all these amazing projects related to the 2023 bond. Uh, we then also discussed um, this Section 35J grant um, and we'll, uh, with, with the components that is try and mentioned in there. You'll actually hear a number of grants uh, that we have, the district has worked really hard um, to apply for and have been awarded. That again, as a reminder, help to take the burden off of our general funds for these instructional materials, these safety materials, all these things that would otherwise come from our budget that we need to pay people and wages and have all these amazing support staff in our, in our classrooms um, and schools. So a big thank you. You'll hear about these uh, different grants that we've got that are being used to fund some of these things this month. And our final discussion item, uh, bond refunding. You'll remember we gave the district the ability to go um, kind of uh, track the bond market and see if it was an opportune time to refund some of our uh, prior bond series. And uh, they were able to take advantage of that with a, a dip, a kind of a transient dip in interest rates that was able to refund the 2014 bond series. We didn't have to issue any new bonds to, uh, to allow that all to happen. Um, we will, again, probably next month see documents to finalize that sale, but the refinance allows us to pay off those 2014 bonds in 2025 instead of the projected 2029, which uh, comes with a gross savings of about $890,000 overall to taxpayers in the community. So again, just keep work there, um, as always, making sure we're, we're keeping on, on top of those bond grants. Which brings us to our action items, and there's a little bit of a list. Um, a number of curriculum materials that were mentioned these jump rope decodable books, fiction and nonfiction, uh, amount not to exceed $242,730. That's the SO3 formula that was mentioned. The other jump rope decodables for the summer school program are for an amount not to exceed $55,200. That's split between the SO3 formula and equalization funds for those different schools. And a uh, handwriting without tears book or books is for an amount not to exceed $46,000 from that section 35J. Uh, Non-curriculum materials include A to B stick cafeteria furniture, part of the renovation process happening over there. Two purchasing co-ops were used. Uh, the recommendation is to purchase from Custer Workplace Interiors for an amount not to exceed $37,550 out of our 2021 capital projects fund. Uh, the next is a, a, a furniture increase. Back in March, we approved a, a sizable purchase to outfit 86 different rooms and eight buildings with new furniture as we have been doing uh, as the construction goes through. One of the vendors forgot to quote us for the installation cost on the quote. Uh, so the original $2,009,000 uh, rough package that we already approved, we need to add about $7,000 more to that large number for a total of $2,016,905. Again, we are already approved about 99% of that. So this is the extra 7,000 uh, for that oversight. Uh, the next item is the Orchard View Media Center shelving. During this renovation, the, the decision was made to try and salvage that to reduce costs uh, from the old uh, library or media center into the new. Um, and we're somewhat reaping the benefits of that now. It's starting to bow and break and they're running into more failures um, than, than is necessary. So this is to uh, purchase new um, shelving units for the media center at Orchard View. 
On the purchasing co-op, uh, the recommendation is to buy from DWL Corporation for an amount not to exceed $36,300 in 2021 capital projects. Next is an annual item um, for our waste and recycling across the district. This was last bid three years ago, and we have contracted with waste management um, for the last three years for this service. We sent back out to bid again and again. Uh, out of three vendors that responded, waste management was the low bid again. So recommending that they be awarded the next three-year contract for an amount not to exceed $212,053. Uh, next is new AV equipment uh, for a couple of buildings and across the district. A lot of the projector type equipment um, is nearing the end of its life cycle across the district. This year, a number of those uh, interactive flat panels uh, were piloted across the district with um, thumbs up largely. So this ask is twofold to outfit a couple of uh, classrooms at Ada Vista, Pine Ridge, and the Transition Center where the new construction is happening uh, with some new audio microphone type um, equipment for use there, and then to provide some of these flat panels uh, in this building, the Fine Arts Center, and then two per school uh, across the district to kind of take the next phase in the pilot so they can uh, expand it more. We just got a handful of them in the district now, but that every school can play with them. Um, there's a lot of cool advantages to them, and, and all of that was, was detailed in the packet. Um, so the recommendation is for Bloom Technology for the classroom audio stuff, and then a group called Data Image for the um, IFPs. Uh, Plan Moran reviewed all of this and recommended had their approval summary as well in our packet. This firm amount to exceed $465,000 for 2021 capital projects. Next is an upgrade to Google Plus. This would be for the first year of a three-year agreement with Google. We have used Google Workplace and Education Fundamentals, the free license since 2012. Uh, and this would be upgrading us to the Plus package that has a number of things, again, that we're in the in our packets in terms of advantages, advanced threat detection, being able to identify and respond uh, to threats more proactively, data protection, additional cloud storage, premium classroom tools uh, like Google Meet Premium, uh, higher degrees of support, and, and more. So this contract would go through June 2027 for an amount not to exceed $55,350. This would also allow us to discontinue our Zoom subscription uh, because we'll have the premium Google Meet, which is very comparable. That's about $27,000 that we spend in Zoom. So that's savings um, by doing this move to Google Plus. Next, surveillance cameras. Um, you'll remember late last summer, almost a year ago, we um, added and replaced uh, a couple hundred cameras across the district after walkthroughs. Um, that came from capital projects. Uh, we have a, additional grants, a Section 97 grant, uh, similar to the literacy grant, but this grant focuses specifically on safety and security in our district. Uh, and these funds are ones that we have been um, looking for best places to use by September of this year. So um, it, on the list of things, an additional, this ask is for an additional, either um, new or upgraded 58 cameras that touch every building in the district, again. Um, so the recommendation is to purchase a Vigilon video surveillance equipment, which is cameras, mounts, licenses, storage from People Driven Technology. I'm not to exceed two hundred forty-eight thousand one hundred dollars out of this Section ninety-seven grant. Next is new athletic training carts. These are the mobile carts. There's one at each high school, three that do all the things you would expect going down to football games and outdoor events, and having our um, athletic training uh, groups and all of their equipment and, and materials in there. Those carts are from two thousand four, two thousand five. I would, I would probably take up with these carts, is my guess. Um, and they've been in all seasons and all weather since that time, so we went through, they're due for replacement. Um, on the purchasing co-op uh, from a group called Labs, and the cost of all three is $38,200, 2021 capital projects. The next is a, a resolution that we adopt annually for the Kent ISD general fund budget. Michigan law, as we know, requires that the uh, ISD submits their budget to local school districts for review and a resolution of approval or, or disapproval. Uh, we were, that was the bulk of our packet. If you uh, read through that, a good 60 pages or so, all of the ISD's plans uh, for their finances next year. This again is, is just for their general fund. They have multiple just like we do. We reviewed, again, in detail at our meeting, um, and the general fund, the district is also reviewing, passes our inspection, essentially, passes the district's inspection. There were a few things they noticed in other funds that um, said they were worth discussing with the ISD. That's happening. 
uh, but again, this resolution tonight is just to approve the general fund, which didn't seem to have any major outliers uh, or items of concern. So that's part of this. Next is uh, to renew our audit service group, which is Manor Casterson. We've been with them for a long time. We heard them mentioned earlier. Um, to use them for our financial audits, both 23 24 fiscal year. They, as we know, have extensive school district experience, especially in medium large sized uh, districts like ours. We've got a great working relationship with them. They do a great job. So, this is an annual thing for us, amount not to exceed $57,500. This is out of our general fund. And finally, just two property tax reimbursements, $9,261.04 to be the township, and $9,879.57 is cash gift. And that's all.